Welcome to this video where we're going to use Python to create an ordering system for an Italian takeaway. To create this system you're going to need to access my blog 101computing.net and the web address will appear on the video. Now let's scroll down this page and what we've got here is a text file and we can open this text file but I've also got it into a trinket over there called foodmenu.txt. Let's look at this text file first. I'm going to zoom in a bit so we can see a bit more what's um, in there. Here we go. So um, this text file is what we call the CSV file, comma separated values. And actually it's not really commas here that are used to separate, but semicolon. What we've got is some codes and then an item of food and then a price in either pound or dollars. And basically, when someone order food in this takeaway, they don't specify which food they want, they specify the code. So for instance, someone would say, I need an S4 if they want mixed leaves, as well as a P6, which is a Romana pizza, and a P10, which is some lasagna. And um, our system will look up for those codes. Um, so the user will input those codes, and our system will look up for those codes, find the matching line, to display on screen the description of the item and the price. And the system will also add up all the prices together to calculate the total cost of the order. So let's look at the code that is already started for you in the main.py file. What we've got here is um, a header uh, to welcome the user, a little welcome message, and then we've got an input statement that will ask the user to enter the first options. Obviously, we would expect the user to know what the codes are. Um, and normally we would give them like a paper menu uh, that they can refer to. What we're going to do next is look up for this code in our text file. That's called a linear search, also known as a serial search. And to do that, we're going to open the file in read mode. And we're going to loop through every single line of the file up until we find the given code. Once we've got it, we will extract the data we want and we will display it on screen. And at the end, we can close the file because we don't need it anymore. So if I run this code to test it, we've got here our banner, our welcome message and our input. Enter the option code you would like to order, for instance, P1 or S4. I'm going to type S4, press enter. And at this stage, nothing, nothing happens. We've just opened the text file and we closed it straight away. Our job is to complete the linear search uh, by accessing every line of the text file over there. And to do so, we're going to use a for loop, okay, which is fairly straightforward in Python for each line. So for line in our file, and then we end up with a colon, which means all the code from now on will have to be indented uh, because it will belong to the for loop. The first thing we're going to do is extract the three fields that appear on each line. Remember, a line is made of three pieces of data. So we're going to split the line using that semicolon to then be able to access the first value, the second value, and the third value one at a time. So let's go back to the main program and let's use a variable called data equal line. And we're going to split using the split function which takes one parameter, the symbol we want to use or the character we want to use to split the line. Now our data variable is now a list which has three value and we can actually use three sub variables um, to store those three values. The first one could be the um, item code which is going to be the first value in my list. Now the first value is the value at index zero. Um, item description, which is the second field, which is at position one in the list. And then the cost or the price, so item price, which is the last field at position two. Now the price is actually um, a string in my text file. It's a piece of text. Uh, what we may want to do later on is actually convert it to a decimal number, a float, okay, or a real number if you prefer. And these are the three pieces of data that um, we've got. What we can now do is check whether we've actually got the right code based on what the user 
he's asking for. And for now, he's only going to the user will only type one um, item like S4 for mixed olives. Um, so if our item code is matching, we will um, display it. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm just going to test what I've done so far to see whether I've managed to retrieve the different codes. Um, so I'm going to print the item code. Um, actually, plus I'm going to do string concatenation, a little hyphen to make it look pretty. And then I'm just going to display two things, the item code and the item description. Just to see whether looping through the text file is working. Let's let's test this. Uh, I'm going to enter a code, but it's not actually going to do anything with it. And what it's doing instead is that it's looping. And for every single line of the text file, it's extracting the data and it's printing one line of code with the code and the description and my little hyphen, which is this one here in the middle. Uh, now, that's not really what we wanted. We only wanted to print that information if we have a match. So for instance, if um, the user typed S4. So we're going to use an if statement. If the item code from the text file is matching the code, which is this one here that the user did input. And if, if that's the case, then we will print. Okay, so I need to indent this further and see what happens. I want some mixed olives, S4. Perfect, you see, this is what we call a linear search. We've looked through every single line of the text file and we use an if statement to find a perfect match. Okay, um, so the only thing we didn't display here is the price. So I'm just going to display the price as well. So plus, um, I'm going to put a little hyphen. I'm going to use the pound symbol. Hopefully that would work. And then I'm going to display the price. Now I've converted the price to a float, which is a number. If I want to use string concatenation here, I need to convert it back to a string. So I'm going to put um, item price here. Let's see what happened here. Let's test this. S4. Here we go. Mix or leave at £3.50. Um, that's perfect. Now, that's pretty much it, basically. We've done our linear search. Now, this system is not really good yet because I can only order one piece of item at a time. And what I'd like to do is to repeat this um, so that if I ask for five or six items, it's going to list them all and it's also going to add and find out the total cost. Okay, so basically what I want to do is repeat all of this many times, okay? And the idea is the user will either type um, a code or they will type um, the letter X to exit um, the system. We may actually to um, put some more information here, um, like some guidance on how to use this system. Um, pre, um, in type X to exit, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this process many times. So I'm going to use a while loop here and while the code is not equal to letter X, which is the letter they have to enter to exit. While this is the case, um, I'm going to do all of this. So I'm going to indent this further. If you highlight all of this and press the tab key, it indent all of it. And what I need to do here is, um, we've already asked what do they want. So the user would have typed the first code they want. It's going to do the linear search here. And at the end of it, we're going to ask them again, would you like to order more items or X to exit? Okay, so I'm going to use an input here. Input, um, enter another code or X to exit. Okay, so this should allow me to search for many, many items up until I press the letter X. Let's try this. So enter the option code you would like to order. Uh, let's go for P1, followed by S2, followed by um, P3, 
here we go so you see i've ordered three pieces of food and i'm now going to exit okay maybe uh, it would be nice to finish with a print goodbye okay print goodbye so when i finish i know it's it's done thanks for ordering and print, print goodbye so um that's good the only thing we haven't done is add up all those costs together and to do so we need a new variable called total cost which i'm going to initialize to zero to start with and then every time i find a piece of item i'm going to add to my total i'm going to increment my total to total cost equal total cost so the current value to start with that would be zero plus and we're going to add the item price item price okay i'm not going to display that item in my loop i'm going to display it at the very end here uh, before the goodbye so print total cost of your order colon and i'm going to use concatenation now remember total cost is a number so i'm going to cast it to a string using str and i'm going to put total cost here okay and that's my final output let's try this so if i want p1 p3 and s4 and then i'm going to exit and it tells me that the total cost of my order is 26 pounds 48. I didn't put the pound sign, so it would look prettier. My output look better with the pound sign. Perfect. Now, once I've done this, um, I've actually done everything I wanted to. So now that I've completed the code, I need to test it to make sure it's producing the right outputs. And to do so, I'm going to follow a test plan, which appears at the bottom of this blog post. You've got three tests to complete. Um, the first one is asking you to order S4, P3, P7, and we expect the output to be, or the total cost to be £28.89. So let's try this S4, P3, P7. So option one, S4, followed by P3, followed by P7, and then we can exit. And the total cost is £28.89. So that is matching our expected outcomes. So I'm going to put a pass here. The next one is P10 and S1. And we should get a price of £16. So let's try this. P10 followed by S1. So lasagna followed by bruschetta and exit. And that gives me a total of 16 pounds. Perfect. And the last one, P4, D2, C2. Okay, so let's try that as well. P4 followed by D2 followed by C2. And I'm going to exit. And my cost is 19 pounds 30. I could just try to find a way to make this um, output display two digit after the dot here. But that's just a slight improvement we could do. So actually, all three um, tests passed. Perfect. We've actually completed this challenge. Um, there is an extension task, um, which I'm not going to cover in this video. But basically, you could add some input validation to make sure that the customer can only enter a valid code from the menu. It's true that um, we haven't tested the fact that if I enter a code that doesn't exist, like Z1, for instance, I don't think this code exists. Um, actually nothing happened so it's not too bad but maybe we could have another message saying this code uh, doesn't exist I would let you investigate how you could do this by changing this code slightly um, now you've got all the code here uh, you can try to re-implement this linear search try to do it step by step remember we started with that for loop here to extract the data we then added an if statement to check whether we did find a match with the code that the user did input um, and we tested this then we've added the while loop which enabled us to type more than um, one item 
And finally, we've initialized a variable called total cost, set it to zero, and we incremented for each item that was found the total cost. And at the end of everything, we display the total of the order. So do it step by step, the for loop first, the if statement, then the while loop, then the extra variable for the total cost and test it all the way through because um, it takes many steps and you want to do it one step at a time. Okay, good luck with this project. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.